Today we're going to be having a look at our crisis fleets or our fallen empire fleets again, but this time we're going to be using some nano technology in our fleets and we're going to compare them to our balance fleet, which was doing pretty well against the fallen empire considering they were out teched and overpowered. So let's have a look at some of the designs. So on the escort, what I've done is I've changed out uh, a couple of plasmas and put in a couple more disruptors. So we've got four disruptors on this ship. We've also got the dragon scale armors there and we've got a nanite repair system to give us daily hull regen and armor regen, which is quite high, 15 and 20%. Not very nice. And we've still got our uh, armor hardening we've put in there. So we've taken off the afterburners because these things are pretty fast as they are. And we're going to run with this and see how this improves the overall battle. And we're keep keeping with our uh, Devastator Torpedoes. For the Battle Cruiser, we've added in some lasers, some Nanite Auto Cannons, and some Plasma. So we're going with a bit more of a mix of weapons to penetrate shields and do damage to the armor. And we're using some Nanite technology. We're using the Nanite Repair System as well. And two levels of Living Reactive Armor to give us nice armor hardening to help try and help us defend against those bypass weapons disruptors focused arc emitters things like that nothing's changed along here and for our titan it's pretty similar except we have added a nanite repair system we've gone with two living reactor armors as well instead of one and taken off an afterburner because we don't need to be that quick being a titan we want to stay at range and do a significant amount of damage you could add another nanite repair system to, to the Titan that makes it nearly nearly undestroyable uh, because it repairs so quickly unless you've got uh, a large fleet remaining to be able to do a lot of spike damage to this fleet. Now opposing us is our fleet which remains unchanged from our battles the previous days though I have got the side drive there for some reason but it doesn't really matter. No changes. We're just going to see how the battle how the uh, battle changes from our previous testing. So I've kept this design exactly the same as it was previously, and we'll add some changes into other battles as we progress into the corvettes. All right, let's dive in and see how this battle unfolds. Firing medium range weapons. I think numbers are still dropping quite quickly. Lost a, oh, lost a couple of uh, escorts, that is. I retreated. Not doing as well as I thought they would do. I'm losing some ships now in the balance fleet. Oh, these are going down quite quickly now. Just pause, see what the damage is, because this fleet, our balance fleet, looks like it is taking a bit of a beating. The focused arc emitters are right up there. Then the small phase disruptors, pair addition beam, devastator torpedoes, and damage to armor, devastator torpedoes, and pair addition beam. Wow, the pair addition beam is really doing a lot of damage. Panic artillery, and to shield, and pair addition beam again. Mm. So the two uh, titans are doing a lot of damage. A lot of spike damage. So it looks like our balanced fleet might be losing this one. Yeah. Down to less than 25k now. Just won't have the ship numbers now to actually do much damage and get through those now. Repair systems I'll just be healing too much. You can see here, look at the level of armor. Way up. Shields are still way up compared to this fleet and the hull damage. That's the difference the nanite repair systems make as well. Considering this fleet has a lot of bypass weaponry to do damage to the hull. Oh, that's a traded fleet. It just took a hit. I think it lost the battleship or something in there. As you can see here, remember the last battles, our hull of our Fall Empire fleet was significantly down for the disruptors, and the nanite repair system is enabled it to repair a lot faster. You can see it's constantly repairing. 
Let's look at the damage, although we did just lose about 10k because that treated right there. So 34,000, it'd be about 30,000, I think, in previous testings I've done. It's been around that high 20s uh, to 30,000 um, losses the balance fleet takes on average compared to the Fallen Empire, or the Crisis, I should say. Uh, 10,000, 11,000 alloys there. They've lost six escorts, only one battle cruiser. Whereas we lost, well, more than half our corvettes, 19, 10 destroyers, uh, it's at 7, 5, 12, that's 17. Looks so, 7, yeah, 5, 17, yeah. And, oh, 7 battleships as well, ouch, that's a big loss. So you can see there how we've managed to turn the tide by adding in some nanite technology. And you could uh, change some of these designs around a little bit differently. If the battle cruisers, the escorts, you might want to put in some different weaponry. But those nanite weapons really do uh, change the uh, force of the battle. And that is in the fifth level of crisis. The so nano swarms, you get the nanite repair system, nanite auto cannon, and nanite flux battery. So you can also use the, the flak battery if you wanted to against these fleets, although the the fleet designs we have don't have any um, black or point defences on the Crisis ships. All right, let's jump into the next battle. So for this battle, I've adjusted things on our uh, balanced fleet. So I've added in some more um, living armour to this fleet compared to our last battle. I've also changed... 5% um, damage buff the aura to a daily hull regen and daily armor regen just to give the fleet a bit more survivability we're trying to lay, limit the damage of the crisis fleet and also repair that damage a bit quicker that's the only change on the titan the battleships have got some more living armor as well i've taken some speed off of the battleships and added in some living armor there so we can be a bit uh, hardened a bit more uh, able to resist some of those uh, bypass attacks. The cruisers are the same. I've gone through and added one living armor to the cruisers so that we can survive a bit longer. Still keeping good speed, still keeping the same weapons. Same here, one living armor to disrupt the cruisers. Our destroyers, again, one living armor, reducing the speed. Everything else is the same, and the Corvettes, did I change the Corvettes? No, I didn't. I've kept them with their speed, because I think it's pretty important the Corvettes have their speed and get in nice and close. But really, it's just adding in some living reactive armor to this fleet and changing the Titan aura, and we'll see how um, this battle pans out. The Crisis Fleet is exactly the same. There's no changes whatsoever to the Crisis Fleet in terms of the weaponry. Let's jump in and see how the battle unfolds. Doesn't look like we're taking as many losses amongst the balanced fleet straight away. Already they've lost quite a bit of firepower, so they are a bit more tanky. Taking those shots a bit better. Absorbing them, so it's a bit close to battle, this one. There's the Titans firing at each other. Firing at a battleship. Uh, it's pretty close. They've lost, what, seven escorts now? They've lost two battle cruisers, three battle cruisers. Ooh. We didn't win this one. Titans just so strong. It's really, really even. It'll be close. Check out the damage again. The focused dark emitters again, small phase disruptors, devastator torpedoes. Devastator torpedoes to armor. Peridition beam again, kinetic artillery. Kinetic artillery is expected, peridition beam, yeah. And we do have the nanite 
Then I'd auto cannons in there too, doing a fair bit of damage. This might come down to the last ship. The way this battle's going. 50 versus 57. Wow. This is going to be really close. They're having a hard time killing each other now. See the shields and armor, shields and armor. Not a lot of difference in it. Even the hull, the hull points. Oh, they just they just lost their titan. That's a big blow. Oh, they don't have a titan either. Oh, we could we could have them. They'll be close. Yeah, I think I think we might just beat them in this one. Last escort, the look of it. Yeah, that's a retreated fleet. So there we go. So we actually managed to turn the tide in that battle. I have done this battle a few times, and it it is really up to RNG. Really, sometimes the balance fleet wins. More often the Crisis Fleet wins. I think it just comes out a bit of RNG with the hits from the pair edition beams and some of the larger weapons, whether they actually hit or miss. Once they lost their Titan, you saw how quickly they went down. Because that Titan, in a number of battles, has been the last ship left, and the Balance Fleet just didn't have enough ships left to be able to overcome the Nanite Repair that just kept repairing too fast. <laughs> so if you added another Nanite Repair system with Titan, it would probably be almost indestructible versus a fleet like this. All right, let's look at the losses. So 25,000 worth of alloys. Not as many losses in the first battle. I can see how much just adding in that living uh, metal, uh, not the living metal, living uh, armor repair has um, managed to make our fleet a lot more tanky. Yeah, so 28,000, so not, not sig significantly more losses. Only 3,000 alloys worth more. So that's pretty good. So this fleet design is very good. In terms, considering we're well outnumbered in technology, that was a very good fleet. And we'll just go over it again so you can have a look at the designs. The Corvette was like this. Pretty standard stuff, really. A light game. The Destroyer was all disruptors. The living reactive armor. Picket computer. Then we had the Devastator torpedoes and disruptors. It's a living reactive armor and some uh, two afterburners there. The picket combat computer I'm using. Then we've got a carrier cruiser with missiles, the point defense flak, artillery combat computer, so we can keep using our missiles within missile range. One living reactive armor, one afterburner, and full disruptor cruiser with line combat computer. One living reactive armor, one afterburner. The battleships are unchanged weapon wise, artillery combat computer, two living reactive armors, one afterburner. You could even probably argue let's put in a third living reactive armor and make it even more tanky. You could certainly argue that. And then the Titan, two living reactive armors, same weapons load out, just one afterburner. You could even put another one in there if you wanted to. And for the Fallen Empire, you could, um, or the, S the uh, Crisis rather. You could opt to put in some uh, another nanite here, make it even more survivable. The battle cruisers, you could, you might want to do the same. Uh, let's look at the actual ship design. Can't see some of those things. The battle cruiser, you could easily say, okay, let's uh, forgo the shield hardening. So you're going to take more damage, but will we be able to repair that damage faster if you have a nanite? Um, that'd be up to testing, but yeah, it's it's um. There's a few little tweaks here. You can change some of the weaponry around as well to try and buff it. All right, let's jump into the next battle. Okay, so for this fight, what I've done is I've changed a few of the weapons around. The Titan remains the same. Battleship remains the same. Carriac Cruiser remains the same. The Devastar Torpedo Cruiser, I've changed in a couple of plasmas from the Disruptors just to see how it goes to see if it makes it a better battle or not. 
Let's see if we can do some more, a bit more spike damage to the armor and the hull rather than just going through it because they are, they are very uh, quite large holes. So particularly in the battle cruisers and titans, I just want to see if it adds more firepower or if it makes it worse, which it, it could could well do. Same with the um, disruptor cruisers, added in a couple of plasmas. Try and make it a bit more spike damage. And the destroyers, the same, couple of plasmas, rather than disruptors, everything else is the same. And the corvettes, I've added one, one plasma instead of two disruptors. It was just a test to see how it goes. And you can see just there's no changes to any defensives, any defensive systems. No changes to the uh, Fallen Empire fleet whatsoever. Still exactly the same. I'll show the battle cruiser. Yes, yeah, the battle cruiser, and that's the escort. They're completely the same. Let's see how this turns out with the simply taking out some disruptors and adding in some plasma. Then we can really see what's doing the damage to this Fallen Empire fleet. It's just like a little experiment. Side's so taking reasonable damage. A couple of escorts. Balance fleet's taking losses as well. Might be going down too quickly. The shields and armor going down. Hull, hull. Looks relatively even. Maybe this fleet's losing a little bit more. I think they're losing more ships. The firepower just keeps going down a bit quicker rather than these guys don't tend to be losing as many ships so maybe our damage output is just not as good they lost two battle cruisers just said that could really hurt them three battle cruisers down still got a lot of escorts in play though and that's probably the disruptors we haven't got enough disruptors to kill those escorts fast enough Whereas we're going down much faster. Yeah, I think this battle is over. Last ship is it? Or two last ships? One last cruiser. There we go. So yeah, pretty well obliterated this fleet. Look at this. Shields, armor, and the hull points are nearly non-existent. That's just because the battle went for longer and we weren't doing enough damage with the disruptors. You can see just changing out those disruptors and putting in plasma, the effect that's had on this battle is just huge. That tells you the disruptors are the ones doing a lot of the damage against the uh, crisis fleet. So nearly 30,000 alloys to replace them and a, and a heck of a lot of repairing. We've got nearly no hull left in this fleet. Versus nearly 17,000 alloys and three battle cruisers, really. That's the biggest loss. And only three escorts. The escorts held up much better without those disruptors there. And let's just have a look at some of the the whole the whole left in these ships. 137. 732. So you can just see how close they actually got to getting destroyed. Yeah. They've really got hit hard. Alright, so changing those disruptors, not a good idea. Let's try the next battle. Okay, so for this fight. I've just changed a few things for the balance fleet. I actually changed the uh, Peridition Beam to the Ancient Ruination Glare just to see if that will make any difference uh, in our battle. And that'll also tell the damage difference between two fleets because the Crisis Fleet has the Peridition Beam still. I kept them with that. Uh, no real changes otherwise to this design for the Titan. For the battleships, uh, basically the same as what it has been. No real changes there. In the cruisers, I've gone back to all disruptors, and I am using the double uh, living 
uh, reactive armor. I think that's all I really changed on some of these designs. I'm not sure if I used that in the second battle or not. Carriers are the same. Uh, where are the... Here we go, this one. I think this is the main one. Now, this is the one that I've added. I've taken out one after burn. I've added a second living reactive armor. So I'm not sure how that's going to go because that's taking away a good chunk of speed. I'm adding in survivability. I'm just hoping these ships can survive longer and fire off more torpedoes and do more damage while they're in there uh, at nice close range fighting with the enemy fleets and hopefully they do more torpedo damage, more spike damage enemy fleet. But I'm just not sure. Taking off that speed could be a problem. I don't think we've changed anything else as well because speed speed is one of the key benefits. we still got our Disruptor Destroyers there. And our Corvettes, we've gone back to double disruptors, just to afterburners, no real changes there. They've really just added a bit of living metal, taking the speed off the disruptor. Torpedo cruisers, adding in more living metal. Uh, not living metal, the living reactive armor. We're calling it living metal for some strange reason. All right, let's see if this battle is any better, if it's improvement or not. Two escorts are ready. Three, four. Fell too even at the moment. Each side's taking losses. Fleet seems to be taking more at the moment. Going down quite quick. See their hull damage going down a bit faster than the crisis. So they lost the battle cruiser. Just not losing enough ships though. You can see the escorts just going around a big group. They're killing everything. This battle is over. Taking too many losses. You just don't kill enough of them early enough. So I think that's where the, the torpedo battleships get in there. It makes them more survivable with the extra speed rather than the extra living reactive armor. Nearly done. There we go. You can see the total losses down to 40k versus 135. That's enough. 32,000 alloys damage. So quite a bit of alloy damage there in that fight. That wasn't very good. Checking the changes. Yes, yeah, so it was just that living metal. Li living reactive armor, rather. Everything else is pretty much the same. Hmm. Versus losses of 12,000. One battle cruiser, six escorts. You can see there the comparison with that second battle we had where our balanced fleet did really well. It was quite tanky, and that was just a, a really good balance. So you can look at those ship designs, and you can see we've just done small changes, just changing out a few plasmas instead of using disruptors, and we lost badly. In this battle, I've only changed the, the one design which was our uh, Devastator Cruisers. Took out an Afterburner. So instead of having two Afterburners, I've got two Living Reactive Armors. And so they just didn't get into the fight fast enough. And maybe just had less speed, less evasion, and they just took too much damage. They're probably just too slow to get in close and fire off their torpedoes fast enough, get that Alpha shot off, get that multiplicative damage done. Because you might, you know, you've, you've got eight Cruisers firing. Uh, Three torpedoes, so that's 24 devastated torpedoes. It could take out three or four escorts in the first volley, and that could be the difference between winning or losing the battle. As you saw those groups of escorts, they just fly around in a group and they just obliterate everything when they've got enough numbers. It's just when their numbers drop lower, faster, they become vulnerable then to our corvettes and destroyers and cruisers that are in close range doing a lot of damage. So I hope you can see there just the small differences in the fleet design. That's what I wanted to show. And I thought today with the nanite technology, the uh, uh, crisis fleet was a lot more tanky, a lot more survivable. So it is important if you are playing the crisis that you get to this level five 
technology, if you're up against other stronger empires or even human opponents, because you can see that the Chrysler ships are not unbeatable. They are very beatable. The right ship designs and right weapons, you can really do a lot of damage against them pretty quickly. So you're going to have to make sure you get some of these nanotech weapons. You can use even use more of those um, archaeotech weapons as well. And there's nothing to say after you've had a few battles with these uh, the Chrysler fleets. The balance fleet then is going to get access to some of the technology of these guys. You're going to start getting, if you haven't already, you're going to start getting the uh, dark matter reactors and uh, you might get dragon scale armor and uh, the, the dark matter reflectors. And then that's going to make, you put those things on the balance fleet and I, I think that's uh, going to give you a victory nearly every time. The crisis fleet really is relying on numbers. They, they need to have a lot more numbers and with their economy and all their advanced buildings able to build much larger fleets and superior numbers and pick off empires one at a time and overwhelm them with just sheer numbers and firepower and that's where the the uh crisis fleets will be very powerful the fallen empire fleet the cosmogenesis crisis would be very powerful but certainly not unbeatable with the right designs and ship combinations all right guys give me some comments and some feedback and, and if you'd like to see anything else with the um the Crisis Fleets or the Fallen Empire Fleets. I'm going to do some, in probably the next video, I'll be looking at the uh, Swarmer, the Nanite Swarmer, which we can see uh, here. We'll be having a look at that for one of our next videos. And testing that out, you can see here just how small it is, 50 hull points, 100 armor, but it does cost 500 uh, nanites. So it doesn't cost alloys, and it does have four different ship designs that we'll be looking at in our next video. I'll probably try and do that tomorrow. All right, guys, hit that like button for me. Leave some comments, subscribe to the channel if you can, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.